I'm Bobby and I like to make stuff. Today we're going to make a door with some custom art. About a year ago we bought a building and we moved our office from my basement into that building and now this room that was our old office became my own personal home office. I love it. It's got all the stuff that I like to look at. I've decorated it. I've got all my instruments in here and it's really cool. But one thing I've always wanted to change about this room is the door. There's not really anything wrong with the door, except that maybe the doorknob seems a little bit low, but really it's just plain. It's a boring, solid white door. And so I think it'd be fun to replace it with something that just looks a little bit more interesting and hangs on a track so it can kind of slide open and close. I've got a simple idea for a door and a cool piece of artwork that we can put in it. So let's go to the shop. Now this door is gonna be hanging on some barn door hardware. And this is a kit of hardware that I got a long time ago for another project we never ended up doing. It's been sitting around, so I'm just gonna take advantage of it. So the way this works is you make a door and then you have two of these rollers that you attach to the door. Those rollers set on a track and then you can roll it back and forth. It's really, really simple to do. But because of this piece of hardware, we don't have to exactly make the door like you would normally make one. Imagine that this door were made out of individual pieces and inset panels. Over time, a door that's not made correctly will end up sagging on the opposite side of the hinges, so you wanna make sure that you strengthen the entire thing to counteract that. That's a whole different type of door. What I'm doing is basically just a picture frame and we're gonna hang it from the top. I took some measurements from the hardware and I've got all of those sizes drawn out here to make sure that I make the door tall enough to cover the door frame, but not too tall to push the hardware up too close to the ceiling. I've got all that worked out. I've got the actual dimensions of the room worked out, how big the door needs to be. And this is basically what I'm gonna build. As you can see, this is incredibly simple. We have some vertical pieces. We have some cross pieces that will connect it all together. There's gonna to be an inset panel of plywood right down here in the bottom. And then our art is gonna go in the top. But we're gonna be making this whole thing out of one by fours and that's gonna make it really easy. For this project, I'm using maple one by fours. Pine would have been considerably cheaper, but I like the way the maple looks. So that's what we're gonna use. We're gonna use two of these and glue them together to make up the frame of the entire door. And we're gonna offset the front piece and the back piece to make a half lap so that we can join the entire thing together and make it really strong. I think you can see what I'm going for here. The bottom and the top pieces are overlapped, so there's a lot of different surface area for glue. And when I glue up this entire thing, it's definitely gonna hold together and hopefully won't bend too bad over time. So as I go to glue and clamp this entire thing up, I wanna make sure of one thing. It's really, really important that the distance from this corner to the opposite corner is exactly the same as this corner to its opposite corner. If those are the same, that will mean that the entire door is square or square enough in this case. And if not, then the entire thing is gonna be sitting at an angle. We don't want that. So if you go to clamp something like this, make sure it's square. The door frame is glued up, so I'm just gonna let that stay in the clamps for a little while. And while it's in there, I'm gonna go ahead and put up the barn door hardware. Now the kit came with instructions, so I'm not really gonna go through it in depth, but basically it's just a bar that goes across the wall on some standoffs, and then those things hook over top of it. So I'm gonna go get that in place, and then this should be ready to move on to the next stage. The frame is now dry enough to move on, and now I'm choosing to use the back side as the side that has the short ends. So basically the cross pieces are on the back side. And the reason I'm doing that is just because I like the look of pieces going all the way top to the bottom, so I'm gonna put those on the front. So I've got it laid on its front because I actually need to cut a rabbit into the back side into both of these openings. A lot of times I say rabbit or dado and I never actually explain what that means. This is a rabbiting bit and it goes in a router like this and it has a bearing here on the bottom. So that bearing is gonna push into a piece of material and land on part of it. And then the cutting head is gonna cut away the material above it. So you're gonna run it around the inside and it's gonna make a little shelf or a rabbit on the back side of this piece. Now this is about 3 eighths of an inch. I need it to be a lot taller than that. So I'm gonna run around 
lower the bit, and then run around again, so I end up with about three quarters or maybe an inch of rabbit on both of these sections. And the reason I'm doing that is because I need to put panels in these two big openings, and those panels need to kind of float in between the front and the back of this frame. So I'm gonna cut down that shelf, set in the panel, and then I'll put a piece of trim on the back side of it and nail it into the sides to hold it in place. Now the big section down here on the bottom is gonna be a piece of half inch plywood, I wish I could go quarter inch because it would be lighter, but I just don't have any. So I'm gonna use that down here. And then up here is gonna be an eighth inch material. And this is a piece of artwork that we're gonna make. And that's where the real work of this project is gonna come. This video is sponsored by Micro Center, which is awesome because we have a bunch of builds coming up really soon that have a lot of electronics in them. And Micro Center is the place to go to get all of your maker electronic needs. They've got a whole aisle of maker boards like Raspberry Pis and Arduinos and all the sensors and other things that you need to go with them to make your projects. On top of that, they've got consumer electronics plus a bunch of drones, camera equipment, 3D printers, all sorts of stuff for your maker journey. On top of all the things that they sell, they also have an awesome staff that can help you find all the things that you need for your projects and an online community where you can talk to other like-minded makers, get suggestions, and help with your projects. Overall, Micro Center just wants you to come in and check out the store. So, they've given us a form, and we'll put a link to it down in the description. You fill that out with some basic information, take it into the store, and they're gonna give you a 128 gig micro SD card and a 128 gig USB drive for nothing. All you gotta do is show up. It's a really awesome store. You're gonna love it, so go check them out, and big thanks to Micro Center for sponsoring this video. I actually just thought of something that would have made this a lot faster, and I wish I'd thought of it before I glued this up. The top layer could have been ripped down to thinner pieces, which would have kind of gotten rid of what I'm getting rid of now on the table saw. It would have been way faster, way less messy, and then I would only have to be putting the rabbit on the bottom section, and the rabbit would have to be really shallow. So, if you make something like this, do better than I did. So the door's pretty much done, but next we have the real work, and that's gonna to be to put a piece of art in this opening. It's gonna go in from the back side. And so I've measured this opening, and I've got kind of an idea of what the art is gonna be, but I don't exactly know how to go about it. I'm gonna use resin and acrylic to build out a picture that's kind of a minimalist take on Star Wars. So first, I've gotta make the form that is this size, because I'm gonna to try to make this all as one big sheet that we can pull out and just stick in the door. So first, let's start with a form that will hold all the resin in and not let it leak out. So I cut down this piece of melamine from a giant leftover piece from another project years ago, and I'm trying to figure out how to make this form because I've never done this before. But instead of going to look it up, I'm just gonna go for it. We've got this piece here and we're gonna make a little wall all the way around it and just hot glue that wall on and then come back and seal up the corner so that the epoxy won't like leak out. And so I'm gonna get some pieces of probably acrylic cut down and then we'll hot glue them around and seal it up and we'll have just a really shallow tray because this entire piece of art doesn't need to be more than like an eighth of an inch thick. I didn't use the acrylic blade, and you can see, if you look really close, how chipped both sides of this are. Now, in this case, it doesn't really matter because I'm using this as a wall, but that's why by using the correct type of blade will give you a much cleaner cut. Now, this one's not that bad. This side is really bad because it actually tore away a lot of the stuff. There's big gaps, big pieces that got thrown out, and that will be a problem uh, depending on where I put that on this particular mold. So. I may go ahead and switch the blade to do the rest of them. It's worth a shot, but now you know. So I want to show you the difference here. These are the ones that I cut with the acrylic blade and it cuts way easier and chips don't fly off and hit you in the face, but also just the cut quality is way better. If you look at those two next to each other, you can see that the one over here has tons of chips. It's catching light, it's not real great, but the blade really does make a difference. So I've got this thing sealed up. I assume that it will hold all of the resin. 
I don't know, we'll find out, but I have to let the silicone set up for a little while. So while we're doing that, we're gonna start on the art and the art is gonna be based on a piece of art that I've seen online a bunch of different times from Tatooine, from the first Star Wars movie, where there's this little house like that, that you've probably seen, and then there's two suns. So the idea here is that we're gonna cut a black piece of acrylic for all of this kind of silhouette down here on the bottom, put that into the frame and then pour all of this area into some sort of a sky color. I haven't quite figured that out yet. And then probably drill two holes and re-pour those. Or before we make this big pour, go ahead and put in two circles of acrylic to represent the, the different suns and then we'll pour around them. I'm not exactly sure yet, but that's the general plan. The first thing is to get this mapped out in Illustrator and then cut out the silhouette. I just need four over here so I can go, hey, can you draw me this thing real quick? So that I don't have to figure out how to use Illustrator again. I've got all these pieces cut, and before I put them in the mold, we have a lot of things we have to do. I'm going to take some solvent and actually adhere these two pieces together. These were too big for my glow forge, so I just cut them in two pieces, but I'm gonna glue them together so that no resin will get in that little gap in between them. Then I'm going to clean and cover the entire surface with mold release. I don't know if that's absolutely necessary, but it won't hurt. Then I'm gonna be putting these things down onto the surface and put some weights on them to hold them down and push them down so Hopefully I can stop some of the resin from getting underneath them. Again, I don't really know if that's gonna work, but I don't wanna glue them down because I want them to be free. So once I get all those pieces down, I get the entire surface clean, I'm gonna have to level the entire mold so that I don't end up with a thick side and a thin side. Then we'll get to pouring the epoxy. From that, I'm just gonna take some regular epoxy, mix in a little bit of color, and then pour it and just kinda hope for the best. I got my form leveled on the table, and once I got it leveled, I actually took a little bit of hot glue and put it around the corners and on the shims to keep it in place because I didn't want to accidentally like knock it with my elbow or something. And after that, I put down all of the different acrylic pieces and put weights on them. Hopefully they will stay where I put them. We'll see. So next up, it's time to pour the epoxy. Now, this is something I've never really done before. I mean, I've done epoxy before, but I've never put color in it and tried to actually mix two colors across the surface. There's lots of videos that will show you how to do it if you're just trying to learn how to do it. For me, this is more of just an experiment, so, you know, we'll see how it turns out. So my plan here is to pour an eighth of an inch of epoxy in this void. And I'm gonna do that in two or maybe three different parts. I'm gonna mix up some kind of purplish pink and pour in a section and then add a little bit of blue to it and then pour in another section and then add a little more blue and pour another section. Then I'm gonna go back with this hair dryer and see if I can get them to blend together well. And if it turns out that the line in between these different color segments is more harsh than I'm expecting, it's not really a big deal because all of the outlines of the acrylic pieces are gonna be really nice and sharp. So let's mix some epoxy, see how it turns out. This is the last color and well, I hope it's the last color. And I gotta be real honest, I am not comfortable with this type of work. Like I have very little control over how the colors are mixing together and that kind of bothers me. I'm just not used to it. Um, I don't think I did a great job of getting the colors in the right order and it is way too pastel for what I would typically do, but we're just gonna keep rolling with it. See how it turns out, because I have no idea. <laughs> It's been about 24 hours since I did that pour, so the resin has cured. It's nice and hard and ready to put another layer on it. I wasn't planning on doing another layer, but I think I need to kind of change the direction a little bit. Basically, these are the pictures that I was looking at to get inspiration. There's a bunch of different pieces of artwork that all have a similar type of sky, and it usually goes from like a dark blue up to a pink and a purple. And I'm not really sure why I chose that, because pinks and purples are not really my colors, but that's what I went with, and let me show you what I ended up with. This is what I ended up with, and it turned out okay. But I definitely had some of the resin come over the edges of the sun, which I knew was a possibility. So um, one thing I'm gonna do is go back and sand these down a little bit just to try to get back to the acrylic in these areas. I'm gonna sand the transition in between this acrylic and this epoxy 
Try to get it smooth, and then I'm gonna go back and do a pour over the entire surface that is just a slightly darker blue, hopefully to kind of darken all of this and tie it all together a little bit more. You won't be able to see that very much over the black, so that should be fine. It will end up changing the orange to look a little bit more like this, and it's just gonna make the white not pure white. But overall, I think it will get the entire color spectrum a little bit closer to what I personally would prefer. We can tell that the epoxy is cured up now, and if you work with epoxy, you end up with a bunch of weird stuff like this, but the art is now done and ready to be taken out of the mold. So I hope it will hold together, but honestly, this is kind of new to me, so we'll just see how it turns out. All right, so I need to get in there and kind of spread the mold and the epoxy. So I'm gonna to try to get in there without scratching the back of the epoxy. So I'm gonna take another one of these pieces of plastic and put a bevel on the end of it and then try to slide it in there just to be able to break those things apart on the inside. And hopefully this won't scratch that. I think this thing's ready to go in the door. I still have to clean off a lot of stuff, but I'm actually gonna get it mounted and then only clean off the areas that I need to so I don't have to keep handling it. And to get it in the door, I've got it kind of trimmed a little bit just to fit in the space. And then I've got some pieces of maple cut here that I can lay right on top of it. And then I'm just gonna use a pin nailer to drive in some pins there so it'll capture it. But if I ever need to take it out because I could swap this out for different art, I can very easily pry these off take it out and put something else in. So here's the finished door. This is definitely an art project, which is not something I'm terribly comfortable with, but overall, I think it turned out pretty good. And the cool thing about this door is that the art could be taken out and swapped out for anything else. So hopefully in the future, I can experiment with this process or some other processes a little bit more and make some other cool art. If this gave you an idea for a project that you could make, I would love to hear about it down in the comments. We've also got tons of other types of projects that you may want to check out. And if you're not subscribed, be sure to do that as well. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Imagine that this door were made out of individual pieces. Pieces? The overall plan that I have here is to pour an H the tip fit and then mix a little bit more color into it and pour the other set.